Hey, Dan here at Sweet Maria's. I wanted to make this quick video uh, as a PSA for cleaning your roaster regularly. Today's demonstration is going to be with a BMOR that was um, donated to me by a friend claiming that it was broken and um, that they were going to take it to the trash heap. So I took a look at the roaster, saw how dirty it was, and asked if I could bring it home, clean it up, and see if we can get it running again. Let's go ahead and have a look inside. Pull out the old chaff collector and the drum. And you can see just how dirty this roasting chamber is. Sorry about the poor lighting. It looks like there was a chaff fire in here at some point, if not multiple. But one spot in particular I wanna point out is this right here. That's where your thermistor sensor is located and that is used to regulate the temperature of the heating elements. So when this gets dirty, it's not able to do its job. I'm gonna to try to clean up the whole inside of this roaster as best I can, pull the side panels and the back panel as well and clean the afterburner. The best part about this is all you need is some cleaner, a sponge, a Phillips screwdriver, and a little bit of elbow grease. Before I disassemble the Beemore, I'm gonna get a bucket of hot water and kafiza going so we can soak the chaff tray and grid drum while we're cleaning the Beemore. I'm not gonna measure the powder, but just put probably about a tablespoon in the bottom of the bucket here and fill the rest up with hot water and that should do the trick. I'm starting off by soaking the inside in this Kafisa solution. I wouldn't normally use this on aluminum, but the buildup is just so bad that I'm gonna uh, pull out the big guns. Symbol green normally works just fine. You can see inside once I get these side panels off just how bad this is. Uh, there's a lot of chaff and smoke buildup, and the oils at the back here have just really caked on with that chaff. These are gonna need to be soaked as well. First, I'll vacuum the inside before spraying any cleaner, and we'll get to scrubbing the machine. I was able to get off quite a bit of the soot and smoke buildup, uh, but before I go any further, I want to make sure that this is going to roast coffee. Um, if it doesn't roast coffee, then there's really no point in going much deeper. But um, the main part that I wanted to clean is inside the roast chamber. I want to make sure and get that sensor nice and cleaned off so that it can regulate the temperature and also just clean up as much of that soot as possible so I don't produce unnecessary smoke. I noticed that the panel, uh, not all the buttons were operating when I first plugged it in. I could only get the one pound button to register. Um, but as I've pushed them more, uh, there it goes. I'm starting to get them to function just with use. So I don't know, let's see what happens here. I've loaded 150 grams. We're gonna do pretty light duty, uh, one pound, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a whirl. The heating elements are glowing red hot, so that's a good sign. Uh, I'm not able to get the light to turn on, but the most important part is working, so that's good. The motor does look like it's running a bit slow, but this is really just a health check. I wanna see what's working and what's not working. I believe I have an extra motor here that I can install if uh, need be, but let's see if this gets to first crack. Okay, we're about, uh, I guess that's 11 and a half minutes in and we got first crack, so that's great. Music to my ears. After one final scrub down, I'm super happy with the results. There's still quite a bit of discoloration inside the roast chamber, but it's roasting coffee again, which is as much as I could have hoped for with this machine. Most of the buttons came back to life except for the plus button, and I'm hoping with some regular use that we'll see that one start to function again as well. It's incredible to see just how much cleanliness impacted this roaster's ability to roast coffee. Says a lot about the importance of keeping up a regular cleaning schedule, of course, but it also speaks to just how tough these Be More coffee roasters are. This is a 1600. It's more than a decade old now. It's seen a ton of roasts, and I think it still hopefully has uh, quite a bit more 
in its future. I'm really happy to have saved it from the transfer station and looking forward to roasting on it more. So thanks a lot for watching.